Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is my second development progress report for the graphical user interface development of Quantum Espresso. Basically, I have implemented the 3D viewer functionalities and in this video, I would like to show you how that works. So uh, we just run the program here. And at a new project, I would like to show the structure of silicon, just name it as silicon here. And you see that I add a 3D toolbar here to control the plotting of the atoms. And then in the center, this is the workspace. So we first choose FCC lattice and for silicon, it's 5.4307 Anstrom. And then add a silicon atom, silicon, just type in silicon here and add. And you see that it's automatically added to the origin here. Yeah? And then we want to add another silicon atom that's, that is uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And in this case, actually, it does not really matter whether it is in alat or crystal. You can use both. It happens to be this way. And then we add it, and you see that there are two silicon atoms here. Yeah? The first thing is that it is not really shown in the primitive cell. So we could fold the atom into the cell. And this is the usual thing that you see in all of the molecular viewing programs. But this is not so intuitive. From here, we have no idea whether it looks really like the diamond structure that we expect. So I have implemented this functionality here to change it to Cartesian coordinates. So basically plot it in the conventional cell rather than primitive cell. So we plot it and you see that it transfers in the Cartesian coordinates within one, one, one. And you see that this is exactly the silicon crystal structure. Yeah? Um, you could also expand in this Cartesian coordinate, let's say here, and that's basically here. Yeah? And let's just change it to back to 111, and then press plot. And sometimes probably if you rotate around and then zoom in, zoom out, uh, and move it around, you may lose sight. Don't worry, you just press reset view, and then this is back. Yeah? Just to mention that as usual, if you hold your left mouse key and then drag, you could rotate the structure. And then if you scroll up and scroll down, that's zoom in and zoom out. And uh, if you hold your middle mouse key and uh, drag around, and this is basically the translational movement of the molecules. And I have also implemented that if you hold the shift key, it will move faster, and if you hold the control key as it here, um, it moves slowly. Okay, so let's reset the view here. So the bound scaling decides which distance do you draw bounds. Uh, so basically, if the bound scaling is 1, we use the empirical atomic radius of the atoms. So if the sum of the two empirical radius of the two atoms is larger than the distance between the two atoms, then we draw a bound here. Yeah? But sometimes the empirical radius does not work very nicely. For example, in this case, that there is no bound join, we have to scale it up a little bit to show all of the bounds. Yeah, I think this is also quite helpful because sometimes in the software you need to go deep to the menu to change that, and I find that not so convenient. Okay, so this is to convert from primitive cell to a conventional cell, and we could also go back. So this is the primitive cell. And we could also expand the supercell in the crystal directions. Let's say two by two by, sorry, two by two by two, and then you see that it's an elongated supercell here. Yeah. Okay. So we go back. So that's for silicon. Um, another interesting example would be sodium chloride, that I would also like to show you here. And first we choose also FCC, and for sodium chloride, five point six four angstrom. And for the atoms, sodium, 0, 0, 0, and add atom here. You see that here. And uh, then the chlorine atom, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, yeah. And in this case, it happens that the unit could either be alat or crystal. So we add it. And you see that the color is different. And I basically use the color convention of JMORG software. So it looks kind of nice. And then uh, in this case, it's also very difficult to see how that is really a sodium chloride uh, crystal. So we could change it to uh, Cartesian coordinate. Let's plot it. And you see that this is a really nice plot of sodium chloride structure. Yeah? And sometimes you may think that the 3D toolbar is a little bit in the way. We could hide the toolbar and uh, expand the toolbar here. Yeah? And then if we 
click the tab to change the project, it will automatically change the workspace plotting. Yeah. Okay. So um, now I have implemented most of the functionalities of the 3D viewer. And the next step is to um, basically uh, implement all of the input parameters for the calculations and how to connect to Quantum Espresso, how to run jobs. But um, we will do step by step. So thank you for watching. If you have any idea, please leave a comment below. And I always appreciate your like or subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time.